If you're interested in learning more about using generated routes, sign up for our Junos Intermediate Routing course. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses. And take good notes in class as this appears in exams in both the service provider and enterprise routing and switching tracks. Now let's get to your learning bite. Hello, my name is David Williams and this learning bite is on using generated routes. A common question that we receive is, what is the difference between an aggregate route and a generated route? We'll start out with the aggregate route. The aggregate route itself, by default, has a next hop of reject. This means that we will not be forwarding traffic on the aggregate, but to a contributing route. We'll see that the generated route actually can be used to forward traffic. The reason for this is that it will have a forwarding next hop, which is associated with a primary contributing route. In our example, we are advertising from the Tier 1 ISP a 10.0-16 route. Our objective is to advertise from R1 to customer X a default route based on the presence of the 10.0-16 route being in the table. If we have the 10016 route in the table on R1, we will generate the default route. If we don't, we will suppress the default route. We can see that we are sending the 10016 route and we need to also generate this route and make sure that the devices R2 and R3 can see it in OSPF. So we'll start out with the configuration of the generated route. Like an aggregate or a static route, it's configured under routing options. You can apply parameters to the generated route, such as preference or routing policy. And we can see that in our example, when the 10016 route is being advertised from ISPX to R1, the next hop will be 172.30.25.1. That next hop is what will be used when we send the default route into OSPF from R1. We need two policies in order for this example to work. The first policy will match our BGP route, 10016 exact. We'll accept that route and we'll have a second term that rejects any other possible contributing route. We have a second policy that matches on the aggregate, which is the default route, and the action is to then accept. Note, the generated route is an aggregate route in the table, so we will match on protocol aggregate for this. We then need to apply the policy to our generated route. This is the policy that matches on the 10016 prefix that we require to be in the table in order to generate the route. We also need to apply the default export policy to OSPF to generate the default route. We can verify our work by doing a show route 0 slash 0 exact detail. The detail allows us to see the contributing routes to our default, which in this case is our 10016 BGP route. We can also see that the default route inherited the next hop of the 10.0.16 BGP route, which is the 172.30.25.1 next hop that was pointing toward the ISP. We'll verify on the other devices R2 and R3 that we do in fact now see 
the generated default route in OSPF. Okay, so let's try one of our own. This topology looks a bit scary, so all we're going to do is use a piece of this. Our example configuration, what we'll be configuring, please make a note, is we're going to start out from the viewpoint of ISP2. And our objective is for the R2 VR device, if we receive BGP routes from ISP2, we will generate a default route into OSPF. If we no longer receive BGP routes from ISP2, we will then suppress the default route. So under normal circumstances, we should be able to send the default route in to OSPF. We should be able to go to R2 and verify it there. We should also be able to see it in R3 and on R4. What we'll do is we'll test and then we will break our upstream connectivity to our ISP and validate that the route has been suppressed. Okay, let's go ahead and configure our generated route. A review of the topology is that the R2VR router is connected to ISP2 and it is also connected to OSPF. Our objective is if we receive BGP routes from ISP2, we want to generate the default route into OSPF. If we lose connectivity to ISP2, then we want to suppress the default route going into OSPF. So let's go ahead and begin our configuration. The device that is connected to the ISP is called the R2VR, which is a routing instance. So let's do an edit routing instance R2VR. Okay, and step number one is we will go ahead and configure the generated route. So let's do a set routing options generate route and we're generating a default which will be a 0 slash 0 okay and we're going to need a policy to apply here so that we can match on the BGP routes coming from ISP2 so we'll apply the policy now and then we will create the policy in the next step so let's go ahead and apply a policy here we'll call it gen route I guess policy, you can remember that, okay. And while we're at it, since we're already in the instance, why don't we go ahead and also apply our policy that will inject the generated route into OSPF. So let's do a set protocols uh, OSPF and we'll say export and we'll name this policy, I guess we'll just call it default route. There we go. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and create these two policies. So let's go to the top. So we'll create the first policy, which is the generated route policy. That's the easy one. So set policy options, policy statement, uh, gen route policy. And what we're matching on here, we want to match on the BGP routes, right, from ISP2. So from protocol BGP then accept and then we'll have a second term that rejects everything else okay the next one we'll go ahead and advertise or create the uh, default route policy so set policy options, policy statement, default route. Okay. All right. So term one will be uh, from protocol aggregate. We also need to match on the correct aggregate. This will be uh, our route filter 
0 slash 0 exact. And then our action will be then accept. OK. Amazing. So let's do a show policy. We have two policies, one that matches on our generated route, and the second one that matches on all of the BGP routes coming from ISP2. OK, so I think we're ready to test and see if this is working. So probably the easy way to do this is we will do a run show route, 0 slash 0 exact. And then this is table uh, R2 dash VR detail. And there is our generated route. Now, the thing to note is our upstream ISP next top is 172.27.0.50 via Gigi003. All right? The primary contributing route is the 1.22.129.0 slash 24 BGP route. So the next hop of this route should also be the same as the next hop for our generated route. So let's go ahead and validate that. So we will do a run show route 1.22. Dot 129.0 slash 24 and you note that the next hop and the outgoing interface is the same. The generated route inherited the next hop from this route which is the primary contributor. The primary contributor is the first route listed here in our list of contributing routes to this generate. Now R2 is also connected to R3 and R4, okay, and they're connected via OSPF. So let's go to one of the other routers. Could be either one, doesn't really matter. So let's do a run show route 0 slash 0. Okay, and as you can see, we are getting the generated route. The next hop is 172.27.0.21 which is 2R2. Okay, so, so far so good. Generated route is working. Now, we, our other objective is we're supposed to suppress the route if we lose our upstream connectivity to the ISP. So let's go back to the R2VR. Okay, so let's go ahead and do an edit routing instance. Uh, R2VR. And our upstream interface, if you recall, was Gigi003. This is our ISP connection. So let's go ahead and deactivate interface uh, Gigi003. And we'll go ahead and commit this. And to verify our work, we can go back to R3 and check the result. Okay, so our commit is happening here. There we go. Let's go back to R3. Okay, this is before with connection to the ISP. Now we do the same command, show route 0 slash 0. And you notice there's no default route. Okay, and I probably, just to make that cleaner, should say exact. There you go. So nothing. All right. So what we demonstrated is that we generated a route from the R2VR, which is connected to ISP2, based on upstream connectivity to that ISP. And we based that on receiving BGP routes from ISP2. If we receive the BGP routes from ISP2, our OSPF router see the default. If we lose upstream connectivity to the ISP, then the default route gets suppressed.
Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.